In this video, we're going to look at thermal efficiency for two reactions, one in which we're given the experimental enthalpy of reaction and one in which we're not. Uh, the formula for efficiency is, so it's expressed as a percentage. So the percent efficiency is equal to the energy output divided by the energy input times 100%. Because we're talking about enthalpy, our energy output is generally going to be the experimental molar enthalpy. And our energy input is going to be our theoretical molar enthalpy. So our first example is the student uses a simple styrofoam calorimeter and determines the molar enthalpy of reaction for solid magnesium in hydrochloric acid is negative 341.6 kilojoules per mole. Assuming the molar enthalpy of formation of HCl gas is the same as HCl aqueous and the molar enthalpy of formation of MgCl2 solid is the same as MgCl2 aqueous, determine the efficiency of reaction. And the reason we've made those assumptions is so we can use the numbers that are in our Chemistry 30 data booklet. So the first thing we're going to do is write down our balanced reaction. So magnesium solid reacts with two hydrochloric acids to produce magnesium chloride, which is soluble, and hydrogen gas. So we have an experimental molar enthalpy, which is 341.6 kilojoules per mole. This is our energy output. So this is the energy that we got out of the reaction. To figure out the energy input, we're going to need to use Hess's law. So we're going to look up the enthalpies of formation in our booklet. Uh, magnesium is an element, so it's going to have an enthalpy of formation of zero. Hydrogen chloride um, is going to have an enthalpy of formation of 92.3 kilojoules per mole. Magnesium chloride has an enthalpy of formation of negative 641.3 kilojoules per mole. And hydrogen is an element, so zero kilojoules per mole. So now we can use Hess's law, which is uh, our enthalpy of reaction. So delta RH is equal to the sum of the coefficients multiplied by the formation enthalpy of the products, which in this case will just be MgCl2, minus the sum of the coefficients multiplied by the formation enthalpy of the reactants, which in this case will just be HCl. So we can plug in our numbers now. We have one mole of MgCl2 that's formed. So that's negative 641.3 kilojoules per mole. And we're going to subtract uh, two moles of HCl multiplied by negative 92.3 kilojoules per mole. And we get a theoretical enthalpy of negative 456.7 kilojoules. Now it's we're comparing molar enthalpy. So we have two options here. Um, option one would be to convert our um, experimental enthalpy into reaction enthalpy for one mole of magnesium, or we can convert this into molar enthalpy. Again, it's for one mole of magnesium. So because it's just one mole of magnesium, it ends up being the same number. So we have our two enthalpies. We can now um, calculate our efficiency. So our percent efficiency is going to equal the energy output, which is our experimental molar enthalpy of reaction, over our energy input, which is the theoretical molar enthalpy of reaction. So our experimental molar enthalpy of reaction is what we actually were able to measure 
during the reaction, and the theoretical is what we know would have been produced based on, the, uh, based on Hess's law and known values for enthalpies of formation. So we can plug in these numbers now, negative 341.6 kilojoules per mole divided by negative 456.7 kilojoules per mole. Really important to make sure that our units are going to cancel here. And then we're going to multiply this by 100%. And we get uh, 74.8% as our efficiency for this reaction. Our next example is a little bit more involved. So rather than give it being given the experimental enthalpy, we're going to calculate it using calorimetry data. So a student designs a simple calorimeter to measure the molar enthalpy of combustion of butane. She collects the following data. We have an initial mass of butane of 4.5 grams, a final mass of butane of 3.62 grams, the volume of water in the calorimeter is 250 milliliters, the initial temperature of the water is 20.2 degrees Celsius, and the final temperature of the water is 25.8 degrees Celsius. So uh, on the right here, we have our calorimeter set up. So we would have an open flame of butane. So this is an open system. Um, it's underneath some sort of um, conductive material that's holding our 250 milliliters of water. So we're going to determine, determine the efficiency. And we have two steps to do this. So our first step is going to be to use the calorimetry data to determine the energy output. So we have um, a mass of butane. We can solve for that um, by finding the difference of the two masses. Now this is the mass burned, so it's going to be a positive number. So we'll take the absolute value of the difference. So 3.62 minus 4.50, and we get a mass of 0 0.88 grams. Uh, the molar mass of butane, we can calculate from our periodic table, is 58.14 grams per mole. Uh, so that allows us to calculate the moles of butane. So moles are always mass over molar mass, so 0 0.88 grams divided by 58.14 grams per mole. and we get 0 0.015 moles. So I'm not gonna round when I actually do the calculation out. Um, for our calorimeter, our surroundings, we have a mass of water. So we're assuming that uh, one gram equals one milliliter, so 250 grams, a specific heat capacity of 4.19 joules per gram degrees Celsius, and a temperature change of 25.8 degrees Celsius minus 20.2 degrees Celsius, and that's 5.6 degrees Celsius. So we can plug this now into our equation to find molar enthalpy. So the molar enthalpy of reaction is going to equal negative mc delta t of our surroundings divided by the moles of our reactant. So negative 250 grams times 4.19 joules per gram degrees Celsius times 5.6 degrees Celsius divided by 0 0.015. And I'll keep all of the decimals when I put this in my calculator. That's going to equal negative 806,116 joules per mole. And we're going to be working with kilojoules for our Hess's law. So if we divide that by um, 1,000, we get negative 806.1 kilojoules per mole. So that is going to be our experimental, out, our, our experimental output, so the energy that goes on the top of that efficiency equation. We're now going to find our input number, our input enthalpy. So I'm just going to quickly write our efficiency equation up here. 
um, and fill in what we have so far. So efficiency is going to equal our molar enthalpy of reaction um, experimental divided by our molar enthalpy of reaction theoretical times 100. And we have an experimental value of negative 806.1 kilojoules per mole. So we're going to be solving for that theoretical using Hess's law. So we need a balanced reaction. Uh, butane is C4H10. Since we want molar enthalpy, we're going to uh, just keep a 1 in front of butane here. So that will make ensure that our enthalpy we calculate is for one mole of butane. Um, so this is going to be plus oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. And since it's an open system, water vapor. Um, so to balance, we'll put four and five. And then in front of oxygen is 13 over two. So we can look up the important values on our table. Um, on pages four and five of our booklet. So the molar enthalpy of formation of carbon dioxide is negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. Water vapor is negative 241.8 kilojoules per mole. Oxygen is an element, so it is zero kilojoules per mole. And butane is negative 125.7 kilojoules per mole. So we can now plug this into Hess's law. So the sum of the coefficient multiplied by the formation enthalpy of our product minus the sum of the coefficient multiplied by the formation enthalpy of our reactants. And so this equals uh, 4 moles of carbon dioxide times negative 393.5 five kilojoules per mole plus five moles of water times negative 241.8 kilojoules per mole. And then we subtract from that one mole of butane times negative 125.7 kilojoules per mole. There's no need to include oxygen in that. So the total enthalpy of our products is negative 2,783 kilojoules and we'll be adding the total enthalpy of our reactants which is 125.7 and we get uh, negative 2657.3 kilojoules and because we only have one mole of butane in our reaction that is the same as the molar enthalpy so we can plug that number in here 26 57.3 kilojoules per mole times 100%. And so we're going to divide 806 by our answer and multiply by 100. And we get an efficiency of 30.3%. So a very, very low efficiency, which makes sense given the rudimentary design of the calorimeter.